Hey everyone, my name is Mike Crowley and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the HTML5 Web Audio API. So basically with the Web Audio API you can do a whole lot of stuff, uh, creating music and playing sounds and doing audio processing all from inside of the browser. Um, it's pretty amazing how much you can stuff, how much you can do just with um, an index page and one JavaScript file um, using the window object. So first thing you can do is play audio files. You can create sounds with oscillators, and I'll talk about what an oscillator is and how it works in a second. Uh, you can manipulate audio from the microphone or a camera, so you can use various sensors. It's really easy to just plug it right in. Um, you can route sounds into effects. There's a couple of uh, built-in effects like delay, reverb, distortion, and filter. Uh, you can also analyze sounds using um, making visualizations like an oscilloscope or even like an iTunes visualizer type thing or a uh, frequency response bar. Um, and you can wire up controllers like a MIDI controller, like if you've ever seen a DJ that doesn't have turntables but there's just like a square of buttons and knobs and it's just meant to control the computer. It's really easy to hook that up. And then if you know how to use Arduino, it's also really easy to just put little knobs or buttons onto your Ardu Arduino and uh, connect it to the code. And what it starts off with is something called an audio context, which is kind of like the canvas um, in HTML5. The canvas is like a tag that you can use to make um, like a board for doing drawing apps. And an audio context is kind of like the box around a modular synthesizer. Um, and that's that thing, it's really hard to see with the light, but it's basically a big box um, with a million knobs and cords coming in and out of it. And each one of these like little squares will be a little module that does something specific like create an oscillator or it'll have a filter effect or distortion or something like that. Um, and you can create an audio context in a JavaScript file really quickly by just doing new window.audio context. Um, it all comes as a part of HTML5. Um, and basically the way it's going to work is that you create this audio context and you create these little modules inside of it and you hook up connections to them. So you get something that's creating a sound, you connect it to something that affects the sound and then you connect that to the destination which would be the speakers on your computer. Um, so to create an oscillator you just do audio context create oscillator. Um, and then on this oscillator object, there's a bunch of values like the frequency or the type of oscillator. And basically what an oscillator is, is something that creates a sound wave. Um, a sound wave is like a, a wave that happens, that's uh, oscillating between 20 hertz or 20,000 hertz. That's like the audible range. Um, and a really, uh, you know, a really low note would be low frequency, high note would be a high frequency. Like the A4 on a keyboard is at uh, 440 hertz. Um, once you get up above 15,000 hertz, uh, most people can't hear it other than like dogs or actually young women can hear things really high up in the frequency range, but most people lose that at a certain age. Um, and then the type is the type of wave. So a sine wave is just a really smooth curve. Um, there's square waves, uh, sawtooth waves, um, triangle waves. These are all different types of oscillations essentially. Um, inside of the little app that I made, I put some functions into this synth factory thing so that I could kind of like add things onto the oscillator object, like start and stop, um, and something that would change the frequency and that would change the type. So that I basically made a little synthesizer inside of the browser. Um, it's like super basic functions. Um, next up is the gain. So if you have an oscillator creating a sound wave, often it's like a very, very weak signal. So you need to connect that to a gain, which is going to boost the signal so that you can actually hear it. Um, so same thing, context.createGain and the gain node.gain.value. That ends up being kind of like the volume, uh, depending on how you route um, your modules inside of this audio context. Um, next up, uh, the one effect that I put on was a filter. So what a filter does is it filters. Um, it'll cut out some of the output of the oscillator. So if the type is low pass, everything that's below will pass. Um, and if it's a high pass, everything that's above that will pass. If it's a band pass, 
It's a little, little narrow range on the frequency spectrum. So if you hear a DJ, for example, playing a beat and all of the low end kind of like passes out and it like it becomes very like scratchy. Um, he's using a high pass filter and then he just turns the knob and that is uh, the proverbial bass slam uh, when he like brings, brings the bass back in. So I created a, this filter here and made it a low pass and put the initial value at 300, um, which we'll see in effect in a minute what that sound like. Um, and the next step is the connections. So it's as simple as doing dot connect. Um, here the LFO is a low frequency oscillator, which uh, you can be able to hear what that means in a second. Um, oscillators create, you know, a, a, a tone that you would hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. You can't actually hear the wave going up and down. But an LFO is like a really slow wave. So that's when you hear a synth going won't, won't, won't like that. So it's, it's a, just another wave, but it's happening so slow that you can actually hear the effect, which is really key for making electronic music. So I connected this um, low frequency oscillator to a gain, a modulation gain, and connected that to a gain. Connect the oscillator to the filter so that the filter can affect the oscillator. Connected the gain to a master gain, and I connected that master gain to an actual volume knob so I could turn down the volume of the entire output. And then I connected it to the context.destination, de which on your computer would default to the speakers or the headphones. Um, but what you can do with .connect is you can connect it to something like a canvas in HTML, and you can make it so that the sound will produce visuals. Um, and this I just drew up because it was much faster to do. But this is basically the audio routing graph, as they call it. So there's the LFO going into the modulation gain which goes into a gain, and on the bottom you have an oscillator going into a filter, and then the second gain on the right, which you guys probably can't even see anything, but is the master gain, um, which I have the volume connected to. So this is um, on a modular synth, which is basically a big box of modules that can do all these different things. You would take a chord and plug it into one, plug it into another one, so you'd have like an oscillator module and a filter module, and then you connect that to like a little mixer module, and then the speaker wire comes out of that into a speaker. Um, so it's a similar kind of way of doing things. So here is a little app that I made using the Web Audio API. Um, and I used a Yomon generator uh, to just like quickly whip up an Angular app. Um, and these slider bars are. Uh, an input type in HTML called range. Um, so you can just really quickly make slider bars. And I'm going to choose a square wave for the oscillator. I'm going to set the frequency to something like 100 or a little bit more. And I need this filter frequency. So if the frequency is higher and everything below is coming through, you'll hear it. So that's that. So you hear you can tell the frequency of the oscillator going up and down. And actually putting a LFO, which um, I actually don't have it hooked up to the oscillator frequency, but you hear this going up and down. That's literally how a police siren works, is they just have a basic oscillator. And they have an LFO, which is a really slow wave affecting the frequency of the oscillator. So here, here's the LFO affecting the volume. And it goes really slow. And if I crank it up, it goes faster or slower. Um, and you can change the shape of the LFO. It's a little bit hard to hear the difference with this tiny speaker. but. Sawtooth wave goes up and then goes abruptly back down. Um, and if I change this to high pass, only the higher pitch sounds come through. Low pass, only the lower pitch sounds come through. Um, and so this, um, what's kind of amazing about this is that it, this only took me, a, the basic structure of it took me like 30 minutes to make. Tuning all these little things like took hours, but 
the fact that you can make all of this and that you can have actually an unlimited number of audio sources inside of the browser means that a web browser is now an insanely powerful music making tool, even though um, issues with latency and stuff would come in. So maybe it's not most preferable if you're like an actual musician. But the potential for music making, I think, for educational purposes, for people who want to learn synthesis, actually is huge. Um, next thing, so with visualization, you do, there's this analyzer object. When you connect something to an analyzer object, you can get data from the source and just map it to different things. Um, this one, that one's here. I'll show you this guy here. It's extremely loud, but that does, uh, that just shows you the shape of the wave. I knew that was going to happen, and I can't, like, control the volume, so... There's another one that involves a visualization here, which is Theremin is one of the oldest electronic instruments where it's just like a box with magnetism, I guess, coming out of it, you could say. And when you moved your hand, it would change it. So this guy hooked up the mouse so that as I move the mouse, not only does it draw on the canvas, it also changes the frequency of an oscillator. Um, another example, and this is a really complex example. It just shows you how far you can go. Um, this guy uses sound samples, but he created an entire drum machine with a step sequencer. So these are all just buttons that are triggering samples. And he's got all these different... his own effects out of the built-in effects that come with HTML5. So that's basically it. And I think uh, part of why I wanted to do this is just because I like making music and I'm an electronic musician, so it appeals to me. But I also think it's actually really interesting for people who would want to learn how to get into using electronic instruments because you can kind of emulate them really well.